Hello there guys, it's Joey, and this is a requested pillar for Baba Yaga. Am I saying that correctly? Baba Yagda? So I was doing uh, research about her because I obviously had the uh, mindset of her being Russian and I've ran into her mythos uh, only a couple of times. Uh, Russian folklore is something that I don't run into an awful lot uh, within uh, the course of, of my investigations and even my interest in mythology because I have an interest in, in mythology separate to spiritual path um, of her being you know a frightening crone figure witch figure um, and I've come across representations of her being through mirrors and things of that nature but I wanted to have a a read around and a research and a feel out of the energy because clearly there's crone energy and clearly there's a, f a fear element going on and usually that merits looking beyond that because she is a crone goddess and there's a couple of uh, images that really stuck with me as I was reading through the, the Baba Yaga lore. There is the one about her being the, the last sheaf of corn uh, at the harvest and there is actually a couple of sheaves of uh, wheat in this candle and they, they've actually kind of hidden. You, could kind, you can kind of see, ah, okay, see there? See that slightly darker bit there and there's a slightly yellow bit there? There are sheaves of uh, wheat, very small pieces which are within the candle itself to represent her element of being of the harvest and she's given as often a, as a, a death goddess and uh, the frightening story is is that she's evil and um, her house was surrounded by a fence of, of bones of human skulls uh, and a lock that was a mouth of sharp teeth. The house turned on chicken legs and she became the evil witch and, and the, that scared children and, and, and men alike. But I really found the following quite interesting. She's a goddess of the underworld as well as a guardian of the fountain of waters of life not only the goddess of death but the goddess of life at dawn a white horseman leaves her residence when noon arrives a red horseman leaves her residence and at dusk a black horseman leaves her residence only for the cycle to begin again at dawn these are signs of a triple goddess some believe that uh, the horsemen aren't actually horsemen, they're actually uh, women, they're actually archetype of, of the triple goddess here. And um, I was reading some very interesting uh, meditations where people have connected with her energy, uh, where that um, It was good to be remembered came came up a, a lot uh, even if the uh, the telling of the story is wrong if it you know the representation and the fear element is wrong and I, I was finding it very intriguing so for the energies of having uh, the white horse the black horse and the red horse uh, horseman within you have those three colors represented here within the candle the candle itself is white with elements of red and black within the whiteness of the pillar is something that I feel corresponds very well to crone goddess energy in particular. And so I really wanted the life, death and rebirth element to be within the pillar. Uh, there is a white glitter. It's, it's uh, I don't know how well you can see because of the light. Ooh, you can kind of see down the rim there. Yeah, there is a, a white shimmer over the top. It's a little bit harder to see because of the, uh, the way the light is. But the white element for me is something that I associate very strongly 
uh, with crone goddess energy. And the reason for this is it works within my scope of crone connectivity, but also because white was originally a death colour. It was originally a death colour and they got swapped over for it to be a wedding colour. So it's a shroud colour and I think it's interesting how uh, our notions of life and death and what we associate with these things change over time and how we become afraid of the female archetype. And this pillar very much represents the energy of Baba Yagada who has been demonised. And I understand that so well because I work with the goddess Bave, who in her own way has also been demonised. A lot of the Celtic mythos has. So I felt that kinship coming through but I really wanted these three colours and they very much correspond to death goddesses. And many many death goddesses have black, white and red in their uh, repertoire if you like or correspondence if you like and I think it brings something. It, it brings those, weaves those energies of those particular magics into it so you have an element of of life, death and rebirth and I actually chose uh, the herbs and things that went into this particular pillar for their correspondence to uh, those interweavings of energy. So you have the wheat and, and the, the little bits of wheat for her mythos of being uh, the last sheaf of the harvest and, and looking at uh, what we have been given uh, being grateful and looking beyond uh, what we think we know of a situation, what we think we have, what we think we don't have and how we represent ourselves to the world out there. So I think with Baba Yaga in particular she gets presented as monstrous but uh, it's, it's a fear element and we need to look beyond that very much like we look, need to look beyond our fear of death and beyond our fear of crone goddesses and understand that it is the human fear that portrays things as monstrous rather than trying to understand. The herb, the red herb in here for life is very very full of life and the uh, black is for blessings really, blessings to do with death and, and um, I think it's one of the things that I look at crone goddess energy in particular, which is the idea of the blessed death. Um, to be blessed with the gift of death uh, sounds like an odd thing on the surface of it, but uh, when you really start to think about being immortal and not being able to die, then you start to understand the concept of death as a blessing, because you have a limited amount of time in this lifetime, moments are more precious and uh, I think within the mythos of Baba Yagda who, you know, there are this, these sort of mythoses around witch stealing children, it kind of brings into sharp relief the need to hold close what is dear to us and, and remember what is precious and remember the innocence of being a child and of appreciating the world through those eyes and that comes into this particular spell work here as well. So I hope you like the pillar for Baba Yagda and many blessings.